God created men and women to be like himself. He gave them his blessing and called them human beings. God gave them the authority of choice. Because of pride, they chose to do evil and sin entered into the world. Genesis 6, 5 reads, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The wickedness of the world provoked God's wrath and caused the flood. Because of the law of seed time and harvest, without the intervention of God, this is what would happen. And it's found in Matthew 24:22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Stay tuned for our study of creating a clean heart. Hi, I'm Jackie Stewart and I'm your host for today's Bible study. And I'd like to encourage all of you to get a Bible that you can read, write in and understand, and follow through as we go through our study. Our topic today is entitled, creating a clean heart and it's based on our text scripture found in Psalms 51:10, and this is the King James and it reads create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me sharing this topic with me is Richard Stewart pastor of New Creation Fellowship and Pastor Stewart as always I'm thankful that you are here well I thank you for having me and uh, when you were given our text scripture, where did the Holy Spirit lead you? Well, the first thing he led me to do was to see if I could figure out what was being meant by the word heart. Okay. And, and I looked, as I looked through the scriptures, I see that the heart means about four different things as it's used, especially in the Old Testament. It means the the mind in Genesis 6, 5. It means the will in Exodus 35, 5. It means the emotions. It also means the middle of things, like in Deuteronomy 4, 1. And it's also used to represent the heart, the physical heart of a man. And so in looking at this, I saw it there in that same 10th verse. He said, uh, and renew a right spirit within me. So I have a pretty good indication that he's not talking about the spirit because he's listed two things, the heart and the spirit. And it appears that as he's asking for this heart to be created in him, he's referring to basically his soul, which would include all of those things that are mentioned as far as the mind, the will, and the emotions. And he wants to be renewed. He wants to be his mind renewed, his will renewed, his emotions renewed. And at the same time, he want to, wants to have the right spirit within him. He's asking, he's going before God and pleading. And so the next thing, I, I know that people have prayed this prayer. Uh, and for some people, it appears as though the prayer is answered. But for others, it isn't especially when you're working with people that are, uh, have been challenged with various addictions and they're trying to get free from them. And some of them seems like they can pray this prayer and they get freed and the others pray the same prayer and they don't. And I know from the scriptures that God is not a respecter of persons. In fact, in uh, Acts 10.34, it says, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. And there are other scriptures that talk about this. So and that means he doesn't have favorites. He's not, he doesn't play favorites. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give to you something that he won't give to me. Let me share uh, with you my mm -hmm. research on what is the heart. And um, I found that it is the place of the purposes and desires. And it's the core or center of a thing. And um, it says the place of the imagination which frames the thoughts of the heart. And we've known from other studies that people, human beings, think in terms of pictures. So it's a place of pictures. And um, I glean from the definition that it is a place of conception for thought. 
and it is the immaterial inner self or the seat of one's inner nature where, where exists strong desire and attentions and intentions are established. So we know then that it is the center of whatever aspect of the person we're talking about. And that center being the, the really, as it's being used here, the seat of the soul or the seat of the emotions in the mind and the will, which uh, this person, the psalmist, is crying out that he wants a clean mind. He wants his emotions to be right before God. He wants his will to be, to do the things of God, the will of God. For those students who are not familiar with the uh, triune being of a man, could you uh, elaborate on that? Well, the scriptures state that man is th three parts. He's a spirit. He is a spirit. He's created in the likeness and the image of God, and God is a spirit. Man is a spirit. God blew the spirit of life and breathed the spirit of life into the man, and the man became a living soul. So the man has a soul mm -hmm. that was given to him at the time the spirit of life was breathed into him. So the soul is really the mind, the will, the emotions. And this scripture could have said, create in me a clean soul, O God. Okay. And, and the, the, both the spirit and the soul reside in a body. So those are the three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And we have been given instructions and information that the body's dead. It died at the time Adam sinned. The body is not going to be renewed. You can't do anything with it, but keep it under control. So you mean that although we're animated, the body in and of itself is dead? It's dead. As far as it's never going to be in union with God again. We'll have a new body, a body like the Lord Jesus, a body that's free of any blood. It will be flesh and bone, <laughs> and we won't need the blood, and we'll have a glorified body. But he also told us to renew our mind. And our mind, once again, goes back to the heart. And our spirit, we have a brand, not a renewed spirit, we have a brand new spirit at the time we're born again. Mm -hmm. So the spirit has been taken care of. The body, we've been promised to receive a new body, and now we're left with the soul, and we're told to, to in uh, Romans 12, that we can renew our soul as far as our mind, be renewed through the renewing of your soul. And, and we can renew this same thing that uh, the psalmist was crying out for, we can do that on our own. This is why it's important to know that God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. If I want a clean heart, if I want a renewed soul, God has given me the way to renew my soul, mm -hmm. and that's through his word. Um, when we say that the body is dead, what do you mean by that? Because I know that some people listening to that might get off on a tangent. Well, let me see if I can put it this way. The body's dead, and now it's in the process of dying. Okay. Death I, meaning separation? Separation from God. It's okay. never going to be joined to God. It's not going to go through eternity. We're just in the process of dying. You'd have to study the scriptures, at least read the scriptures, Back in Genesis, when Adam was told not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God told him, he said, for in the day you do eat of that tree, you shall surely die. 